Good evening. Um, this is our series of lecture, and we are now in module three in uh, um, our course in uh, Management 103. And that is uh, a continuation of our previous lecture on uh, the various factors affecting uh, agribusiness, especially uh, related to the systems concept or systems analysis in response to uh, in, in the agribusiness systems. So that uh, this evening or this uh, today, we'll now tackle on a new module, which is uh, uh, different tools in understanding the agribusiness system. Now, as you may be aware in our previous lecture, there are various uh, components of agribusiness. And we have, in, in fact, uh, there are these are components, we call them the subsystems. And each subsystem has, has some kind of uh, lens of analysis or framework that would enable us to understand better the workings of that particular subsystem. And the lecture that we are going to start today is about a uh, <clears throat> particular lecture on a model or a concept that will be more that will be important in understanding the the workings of the entire agribusiness system from input uh, sector or input subsystem down to the uh, final market subsystem or the final sales subsystem. So we call this particular framework as value chain analysis. Okay, so we need to understand what value chain is all about or what value also is, is all about. So that uh, as we look at the uh, this particular tool, we will also uh, be able to see what are the application, what are the important uh, uh, applicability of this particular model. So this is this first lecture in module three is actually, which is 3.1, is introduction to the theory and principles of value chain analysis. Now, firstly, we need to understand what is, uh, what do we mean value chain or what is, what is value? Who defines value? And what are the sources of value? Okay. So agribusiness as defined is viewed as a value chain. Actually, from our previous lecture, we see that agribusiness is viewed as a value chain. Now, firstly, let's begin our discussion on the concept of product value. What are the ways to improve or increase product value? So first, we, and we, we, we want to understand what is value chain analysis. We want to know also what do we mean by value, what are the sources of value, and how to improve or increase value of a commodity or a product. So product value, what is value then? What is value? So value from its basic definition is actually the technical, economic and service service and social benefits of a customer that a customer or company receives in exchange for a price it pays. So. In other words, value is defined in terms of benefits, either technical, economic, service, or social benefits that a customer receives in exchange for the price that he pay. Okay? May, may, may binabayad ka at may nakaakibat, may exchange then na benefits. So it's a value. Some aspects of value. When we look at value, we express value in terms of monetary, monetary terms. Napaka-obvious yan. Pag sinasabi mong value, it's always referring to monetary. But not all uh, benefits are expressed in monetary terms. Okay? We express value in terms of monetary, such as peso or dollar per unit value. <laughs> Excuse me. Now, another aspect of value is value can mean benefits, of course. We have discussed, we have, I mentioned that. Benefits derived from consuming the product. Benefit would mean net benefit. In other words, you pay 
and then after you after you make the payment you receive the product and you will say solid that means there is an extra benefit that actually is valuable to the customer okay the cost of the customer incurs in, in obtaining the desired benefits except for the purchase price included okay that means over and above the money monetary value the customer has something in his hand or in his mind or in his heart which is what we call as the benefit the net benefit okay uh, something like that no? then the third aspect okay the third aspect is remember there are three aspects of value one is monetary the other one is benefit not necessarily monetary now monetary value in other words net benefit okay another aspect is value is what customer get from a product in exchange for the price it pays okay if i if i pay you this much you have to spend or what you have to uh, work with me this number of hours or this this number of days <laughs> because <clears throat> The, the value of your skills is equivalent to this particular amount. No? It's a market offering has two elemental characteristics. When there is market offering, there are two elemental characteristics. One is value and the other one is price. Okay? So, alam na natin, pag sabihin mong value, value could be monetary, value could be the benefit that you get, over and above the price you pay, that means it's net benefit. And the other one is the price that you pay. <coughs> that is also of value to the customer. <coughs> Sorry. Then, thus raising the price does not change the value. Okay? You increase the price, you do not change the value of the product. To the customer, but rather, it changes the customer's incentive to pay for that market offering, okay? That's why if the price has increased, there are those customers that still buys the product, but there are also those customers who stops buying the product, okay? Why? Because the value to them has decreased and to other customers, it's not affected because they're, they're their surplus uh, customer or consumer surplus in terms of value is still higher. They are still willing to pay at a higher price. That means <clears throat> it's still okay to them. Now, value takes place within some context also. Okay, Even with no comparable market offering existing, <clears throat> there is a competitive alternative that is that the customer is finally decides on <clears throat> making it or rather buying it. Okay. Uh, so in terms of like willingness of the customer to pay, now that willingness to pay is actually also a surrogate definition of <clears throat> value. So if <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> if the price of that commodity has really gone up and the willingness to pay has reduced so considerably the customer might decide on just making it rather than buying it because it's to the, to him or to her it's more economical to to make than to buy okay so that is also the the trade off in terms of value the aspects of value what is value then Okay, what is value then? From from our previous uh, uh, point a while ago, a product or service is generally considered to have a good value if that product or service has appropriate performance. So that means the the value of that particular product that we are selling is actually equated to performance. Okay, so if the performance is very good, that means the value is high. Okay, <clears throat> if the perform <clears throat> if the performance is poor, that means the value is low. Okay, so 
with that, we can say that a value is also relative with respect to the customer. Another uh, perspective of value is personal or your willingness to pay for the performance delivered to you by a product or process. Okay, willingness to pay. That means you can, uh, that, that, that is the reason why you make tawan or you make, uh, you ask for a discount. Because by asking for a discount or tawan, you increase your consumer surplus. Okay? By increasing your consumer surplus, that means to say you have increased your value for that particular product. Oh. Now, let's go to perspective of value. First is that value is subjective experience <clears throat> that is dependent that is dependent on context. <laughs> the need for water after a long jog, willingness to pay is high. Why? Because you are so thirsty. But if you are not that thirsty, your willingness to, willingness to pay for a for a bottle of water is very low, very low. So the second the perspective of value is value occurs when needs are met. Okay, Kanina, uh, value is subjective experience. Another is value is uh, value occurs when needs are met when you serve the needs of the market. Usually during some form of transaction or exchange, when your product meets the requirements of the customer, then there is value. And then, uh, of course, the other perspectives also sits in. Okay. Finally, value is also an experience. Okay. Let me repeat that. Value is subjective. Value is uh, value happens when the when needs of the customer or market is met. And of course, the third one is value is an experience. Okay, so you can either you can either manipulate on these different perspectives of value in order that your product is valuable to the customer. Now, why value is important? Very important thing of value. It is important because it is what attracts customer. Of course. It defines your enterprise. It drives your business direction because that is what you are aiming for. You want to satisfy the customers or even delight your customers. That's why other, uh, other uh, say, or many companies do not advertise the physical product that they are making, but they will advertise on the value proposition of your what of your product example like avon cosmetics now avon cosmetics in the factory they are manufacturing cosmetics but in the market they are not selling cosmetics what do they sell you might say what are you joking they're not they're manufacturing cosmetics but they're not selling cosmetics in the market of course why because in the market as I have said, they don't sell they don't sell cosmetics, but they sell hope. Paglaum, hope of becoming beautiful or hope of becoming whatever you want to be physically. That is what they're selling because that is the value proposition of their product. <laughs> so that is if you if you sell your product in that way, then that drives your business direction that you do manufacture product that addresses that particular value proposition. Then finally, value also is important because it defines you and your customer. Customer becomes loyal because you just serve the, the, what they want. Okay. So in other words, the traditional perspective of value is that price plus is equal to cost plus profit. But From this framework or concept, this traditional perspective no longer works because we want to really uh, make a perspective, a market-driven perspective. That is what we call as the different perspective of value. Value means 
we have <coughs> profit which equals to price minus cost. Why? Why is that arranged that way? So price now or profit now is becoming independent dependent variable. Here, price is the what? Uh, dependent variable. May ngutan na kasi mo ko galingon. May yung ka. Pila may ako i-presyo sa, sa akong kuwan produkto. You cannot say that as an agribusiness uh, person. You should not say that. Pila may akong i-presyo. Why? <coughs> you cannot control price. It's the market that dictates the price. <coughs> Rather, you want to be, you want to, what is uncontrollable there is profit. How much profit do I get? Okay? So that means with, with that profit, that means profit margin. So what is the price in the market? What is the price in the market? So that means X price is equals to the price. So are you able to control, say, price? No way. It's market set. What can you control? You can control cost. Okay, you can control cost. You can control cost at a very competitive level and then the, the cost that you can produce, the cost per unit that you can produce, you compare that with the market price. And there you can see profit. Okay? Are you following? Price is not controllable by the producer. It's, it's the market that dictates. But rather, you can control price or you can control cost. That's why by manipulating on your cost, and compare that with your price, there you can determine your profit per unit or whatever volume you might want. No? So market defines price. Thus, we control cost. Okay. How to increase value then? If that is the equation, how to increase value? Two ways of increasing value. Value is always increased by decreasing cost. Value also can be increased by increasing performance. Okay? Adjust on the cost or improve the performance. So, in that case, everything is controllable from the, from the point of view of the seller. Because price is by no means controllable by the seller. Mahalin man lagi. Huwag ka na i-money akong presyo. Maybe, your, maybe the performance of your product is good, but pay attention on the non-market variable, in other words, or non-price variable, because price is actually impacting directly on the behavior of the customer. Likewise, performance also will impact on the behavior of the customer. But if they are satisfied with the performance, they will not mind the price. That is uh, very important. Now, the framework of value analysis. Okay. One is value creation at the final customer is the direct result of coordinated action. Okay. Coordinated action of various players before that piece of pandisal reaches the customer. Karon tag trace na ni Anto, tag dos pa or tag piso pa ganito ni Anto. Karon tag trace na before the piece of pandisal reaches the final customer at a certain price, there are various players responsible responsible in bringing that product to the final customer, and these players are coordinated in their action in order that they will be able to really provide the kind of product that the customer wants. Value analysis must be approached from an industry or sector perspective. Okay? Each player along the chain generates the final value, coordination of each player. Hence, the framework of analysis is the entire <clears throat> value chain. Okay? <clears throat> the framework of analysis is the entire value chain. So, just like this one by Michael Porter. So, these are the Various players of the product. These are the this this point here is the final sale. No, so you have from the first one is inbound logistics, like you buy inputs, 
And then you have also conversion or whatever, manufacturing processes. And then you have outbound logistics. After conversion, you deliver that. Okay? And then you have here also the marketing after sales service. And then when that produce a value addition to the customer, then you have a sale. You make a sale or you make, it will create, it will sell by itself. Okay? And remember that any of these different players from inbound logistics down to outbound and after sales service, they have all sorts of business operation defined in terms of organization, human resource, technology development, and procurement. These are all the sources of cost that each player in this chain are confronted to. That means they should be able to control their cost in, in all these different business operation in order that the product can move profitably from inbound logistics up to the final sale. Otherwise, conversion pa lang, wala na yung movement. Why? Mahal na kaayong inputs. Or conversion pa lang, or in the outbound logistics pa lang, wala mo deliver. Why? Barat ang binayran sa one, conversion process. So, it has to have coordination and coordination should also be accompanied with incentives. That means, naanay, naanay value addition for each particular uh, entity so that it can provide the regular functioning of the chain until it reaches the final customer which now defines the uh, value addition and you will make sell in finally okay just like for example this one a chain of coordination from inputs production to first level handling processor wholesaler retailers and customers so inputs and production are the upstream most uh, segment of the chain and then you have also like uh, going down the going downstream, the downstream most is the customer. Sila may mo kwan. That is the flow of participation. Now, the entire chain is a value web. Okay, these are the value web. No, <clears throat> the customer defines the product value, affordable, on high quality. <clears throat> with longer shelf life okay now it this particular specification will now be translated by the producer starting from the inputs production and down the line until finally the product comes out affordable of good quality and a better shelf life so more regular as a customer so each of this each of this uh, player should have a coordination in order to satisfy this particular value. In essence, it's the customer that defines value. Okay. So that means, what is a value chain? A value chain is actually, you have the full range of activities of the organization. Performs and links them to the organization of competitive position or you have here a uh, chain of like activities that is respond responsible in meeting the requirements of your customer. Meeting the requirements and also meeting what the customer needs. So, important kaayo na in order to satisfy the needs of the customer, all players that is responsible in delivering the product to the final customer must be coordinated in making sure that the final end of the chain satisfies the needs of the customer. Otherwise, if it is not satisfied, all of them will go uh, hourly or they will go, uh, they will be in trouble actually. So each of these chain participants should have coordination from upstream, downstream, there should be coordination in order to uh, satisfy the requirements of the customer. Who defines value? It's not the maker, it's not the manufacturer, but it's what? It's the customer. The customer defines the value and this value definition by the customer should be 
interpreted by all the players along the chain such that the flow of the product from the upstream downstream will eventually satisfy the requirements of the customer so with that note with that uh, uh, introduction we are now ready to understand what do we mean by uh, value chain so this is the end of lecture uh, um, it's, uh lecture uh, 3.1 uh, a next time we will do a lecture on 3.1 b so i hope uh, you have you got something from this lecture and maybe you can email or chat with me in terms of anything that you need some explanation or further explanation on this particular topic now for this lecture i would say uh, this is the end of this particular uh, session